Oh, hey, rock stars. Uh, uh, we're, we're back at Rat Ring Mountain. Oh, 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 which we've talked about before. Uh, but we're here today to talk about Turtle Rock, which is this rock here, which is a very special, very big piece of... Flushist! Flushist. Let's talk about it. All right, so schist is a kind of metamorphic rock. The original rock it came from has been altered, has been changed so much that the original rock like, has been completely altered. It's completely different from what it started out as. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a sandstone. You can alter a sandstone and turn it into a metamorphic rock with heat, pressure, or both. If you apply a small amount of heat, or a small amount of pressure, it will technically turn into a metamorphic rock. But if it's just a little bit, you can still tell that it's a sandstone. You can still see sand grains in that rock, but technically it's metamorphic. With a schist, the rock has been altered, has been squished or heated so much, you can't tell what it is anymore. You can't tell what the original rock it came from. At this point, minerals start to organize themselves. They start to lie into parallel planes. And that's a really good indicator that you're looking at a schist. We've said what schist is, but we haven't said, talked about the different kinds of schist. You can get all kinds of different kinds of schist. You can get green schist. You can get garnet schist. You can have, um, uh, uh, Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the oh, yeah. Whoa! Each of those different kinds of schists corresponds to um, different kinds of source material, the different kinds of rock that it started from. That Those different minerals, the different elements that make up that rock will end up affecting the schist that you have after it's been altered. But, but that's not the only way that you can get different kinds of schists. Different kinds of, um, of schists can form based off of the differing amounts of pressure and temperature that form that rock. And that's actually a huge way that geologists will categorize metamorphic rocks. You will have different kinds of rocks put into categories based off of the pressure and the temperature that was used to form them. Schist is a metamorphic rock that was formed with lower temperatures and higher pressures. Now, blue schist is a very special kind of schist that formed originally from a basalt that has been altered with very high pressures and very low temperatures relative to a metamorphic rock. We're talking about temperatures that are under a thousand degrees Fahrenheit to give you an idea of the temperatures that we're talking about here. But believe it or not, that's very hard to do. It's very hard to get that, those right conditions for a rock like this. Most of the time, if you're going to form a metamorphic rock, you're just gonna bury it. You're gonna bury it deep, deep underground, and that's gonna give you a lot of pressure from all the overlying rocks, but it will also give you a lot of temperature as well, because the overlying rock will actually act like a blanket, warm and superheat rocks that are underneath. So if we were to bury a basalt deep underground far enough that you would get the proper temperatures to form a blue schist, you would get too much pressure. It simply would form a different kind of rock. So it's a bit of a mystery. It's a bit of a geologic conundrum. How can you form a rock like this with the right amount of pressure, but a low enough temperature? It's, it's, it's in terms of geological events and geological conditions. It's a relatively hard thing to do. There is, however, one way to do it, where there's, there's many multiple ways, hypothetically speaking, but there is one way that will work, that will supply the right amount of pressure, high pressures, and the lower amount of temperatures without superheating this rock too much and keeping it kind of in that sweet spot, you know? Because this is a special, it's a very special rock here where it, was, it, it, it walks a very fine line of moderate metamorphism, not not too much, but not too little. Just enough, just enough to get you that 
Mwah. Yeah. You do that, that, that perfect, that perfect rock. Yes. The blue and blue schist comes from glaucophane, which is a mineral that gives it that nice blue sheen. So believe it or not, blue schists don't have to be blue because blue schist is not only a kind of rock, it's also an entire group of metamorphic rocks that are all grouped together because they're high pressure and low temperature. <clears throat> and that's what's called a geologic facies, an entire group of rocks that are all, that all meet those same requirements. Now, we've already talked about how hard that is, how hard it is to get high pressure and low temperature, but it's something that is uniquely suited for being met in the Bay Area. Because if you remember in our videos at the Marin Headlands, the Bay Area, the, the mystery there is that the Bay Area was formed by a giant subduction zone. And that is the piece that we need in order to put the pieces together. Because subduction is just the right uh, has just the right requirements to be able to have high pressure from a subducting plate that's going to be pushing and squeezing rocks, but a low enough temperature because those rocks aren't buried very deep underground. And so that is why the Bay Area geology is going to be uniquely situated for forming a rock, forming something that has high pressures but the low temperatures. And I think that's pretty darn cool. So, thank you so much for joining me, rock stars, on an awesome expedition back out to Ring Mountain. Rock, uh, Turtle Rock, as it's known. I never mentioned that, but it's called Turtle Rock. In case you hadn't noticed, it looks so much like a turtle. Um, anyway, anyway, this rock is, is, is such, such a very cool specimen. I wanted to really just do a full in-depth video on it. So I hope, I hope that he was able to, to, to kind of open your eyes to the fascinating world of metamorphic geology a little bit and how cool blue schists can be. And our little, our little traveler here that was scraped up from the bottom of an ocean and is now on the top of a hill, top of a mountain right now. Totally, totally cool. Totally cool. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, let me see. Leave me, leave me a comment, you know, if you like this video, let me know. Uh, please uh, let me know what you'd like to see next. I'm actually running out of user-submitted suggestions. This was a, a user-submitted suggestion a while back for Blue Schist, but I'm running low on those. If you want to see something cool, if you want to see something neat around uh, you know where you live, or, or you just need a rock explained, leave that in the comments, and uh, we can we can help you help you out with that, or help figure that out. I don't know something. You know, you know, you know, you know how it is. Subscribe and hit that bell if you want to hear about the crazy cool videos we've got planned for you next week and beyond that. And uh, you know, I'll catch you next time, rock stars. Oh, oh man. Do you know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big boulder. It's not just a boulder. It's a rock. And it's in great shape. Uh, the pioneers used to drive these babies for miles. Let's hit it. Uh!